Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. My name is Michelle. Today, I am gonna take you on a tour of my cutting garden. There's so much going on in the cutting garden. Um, I am still sowing plants. I'm potting up plants. I am harvesting radishes, all sorts of stuff. So let me take you on a tour here in my cutting garden in Northern Virginia in zone 7A. Here's the cutting garden, the beginning of May. Today, what I think I'll do is I'll take you on a tour of the perimeter and then I'll come in the inside of the garden beds. So first up is the a corner bed. And so in here, I just randomly put a bunch of different herbs, mainly for the flowers, for the pollinators. I have my herbs in other containers that I'm gonna use in the kitchen, but we have some, I think that's Indian basil and dill and some forage and holy basil and oregano. That's a lavender plant. I'm not sure that my purple hyacinth beans are doing that well. Um, I have a couple more inside that I'll keep a hold of. Actually, that one looks like it's doing something, but I have some more inside that I'll keep a hold of in case I need to replace these. I planted them way too early, just like I did with everything else. <laughs> and then down this row, this is, these are my dahlias in rainbow order. So I have pinched most of them. And I just like to preface um, any talk that I have about dahlias is from an amateur dahlia grower. So this is my first one that's been pinched and this is Star Child. It is a single, um, so the pollinators love it. And it is white with a yellow center, really beautiful. This one has been pinched as well. And it is dad's favorite. I think this one is called an anemone type. I'm not 100% on that, but um, it has kind of like a ruffle at top and then the, the petals go face downwards. It's uh, a purplish color. And then this one right here also has been pinched. This is Purple Taiejo. I actually don't really like this one. I think it gets um, these weird bugs. I think they're called earwigs. Uh, and I'm not sure how long I'm gonna grow this one for. Okay, and then next up we have Peggy Jean. This, is, this one is a beautiful, beautiful yellow color. Just a really subtle, yellow it's a, a beautiful flower and then we have this guy who is yellow bird these are really cool blooms too because they i always say they they kind of look cartoonish and then we have i think this is groovy let me see yep this is groovy uh, i like to describe this one as like a, a peachy orange and it almost has the petals almost have like a tie-dye effect between those, going between those colors. Really love this one. Then here is this guy and it is fabulous. I think this is another one of those anemone type ones. I don't think I have that name right, but I'll correct myself on the screen. If so, look, this needs, I'm gonna pinch that. Yep, hold on, let me see if I can show you. I'm gonna pinch this right here. And I might try and propagate it. I'm doing some propagation experiments with my dahlias. This one is poodle skirt. So I can't remember what color that one is. And then finally, this one is Holly Hill uh, Black Beauty. It's a super, super dark dahlia, dark, dark red. It's really beautiful. 
here is my burgundy broccoli plant with chamomile to try and deter the cabbage white butterflies. So like I said in my previous vlog, I think, I think that the chamomile is keeping the cabbage white butterflies off, but it might be too early in the season. I might just be, you know, a little too excited about it. And then here is my snowball Y cauliflower and chamomile plant. And then this is my broccoli rob. I'm not sure if anybody knows and wants to tell me because this is my first time growing brassicas. Is that called bolting because it has the seeds on it or is this just like what you eat? I'm not really sure. I need to look it up. <laughs> and then we have dino kale looking good and then red Russian kale. Here is the wild garlic plant I told you about when I was talking about companion planting where I'm keeping that container there as a deterrent for pests. Okay, and then down this back row against the back wall are just lots of native plants that I winter sowed. And when I say winter sowed, it just means that I sowed them outside in flats in the fall. It doesn't mean I did like the milk jug thing. I just sowed them kind of like in the winter or fall. So I'll take you back here. It's a little precarious back here. These are second year um, swamp milkweed. Over here is supposed to be prairie sundrops and purple sneezeweed. Um, I see little signs of life here. I think I must have sowed that one really late. This over here is landsleaf coreopsis. And then we have, I don't know why my GoPro is like trying to change the direction, but anyway, uh, fire pink. Looks like I have a few popping up. This is one of my favorites. And it's one of my favorites for the, t especially because of the time it blooms. It blooms when like nothing else is blooming in that like dead zone in June. There's more fire pink here. Here's Maryland Senna. Wild Senna not having much success on those guys. Of course, the Golden Alexanders, as always, are the superstar germinators. This is, I think this is no, that's Giant Hyssop. And Virgin's Bower Cuttings. What's this? Orange cone flower here. This one is Cory Mountain Mint, Partridge Pea. Look at these cute little seedlings. I don't know if that'll focus. Anyway, they're adorable in the pea family, obviously, and so they're nitrogen fixers. And then finally, Anise Hyssop. So I will try and figure out how to properly <laughs> use this GoPro. Um, so sorry about it, trying to uh, turn on its own in the back of the borders here. This is the this is the red bed and so there's a really dark dark gladiola in there. They're red snapdragons. They're turtle heads. They're white but they've just been in there forever so I leave them and then I have this is where I, I planted my parsley which I incorrectly called celery on my last video. So I planted the celery Oh my gosh, I just did it again. The parsley around here, around the edges, because they can take a little bit of shade. And then here is a row of red snapdragons. And oh, let me just show you, this is the turtle head here. Here's another one, and I pinched these. So like I could pinch this one here and I could probably propagate it. I might try that. I'll let you know if I do. And then those should all be red poppies in front of that are the leaves from the red um, tulips. And in the very front, there should be some alyssum. My, in my orange bed, my purple alliums are starting to bloom. I just let these come back every year. I've put, I don't know how this guy is gonna do back here, but 
I usually have then uh, Mexican sunflowers here once the alliums go over. So I'm not sure if this guy's gonna get enough sun, but I put him here. And I only wanna do one this year because usually I do like two or three and it's way too many. And then I have the orange snapdragon and then the California poppies and the orange uh, tulips that have gone over. Also in both of these beds, like the red bed are red nasturtium and the orange bed are orange nasturtiums. Here at the back of the bed, the yellow bed, this is Rudbeckia triloba and it is a native perennial and has really cool flowers in the fall when not much else is blooming. It's very airy and um, whim whimsy, whimsical, something like that. And then in here I have fennel and yellow snapdragons. And here I also planted around the corners like I did with the parsley, I planted cilantro because it can take a little bit of shade. And yellow nasturtiums, they're actually called butterscotch, are in here as well. Okay, moving down here is a container of alpine strawberry that has started to flower. Pretty flowers. And then I have my Merlot lettuce in here with snap peas. This one is the magnolia blossom snap pea. This is spinach with sugar magnolia snap peas no flowers yet um, we had a friend over the other day who's a chef and he said i should um, also uh, plant this for the shoots i think i'm past the stage of that but that's a really good idea i'm totally gonna do that and then here are my radishes easter egg and french breakfast i harvested some of these already so I'm gonna try um, a recipe, I think, tonight. Then we have my Jerusalem artichokes. And now today, hopefully this morning, I am going, I've gotten my stuff ready here to plant out my, some of my tomatoes. I have more grow bags and stuff elsewhere, but my tomatoes, and then I have all my companion plants that I talked about. So I have like the lemon and tangerine, um, marigolds here these smell so flipping good if you want <laughs> a really good smelling marigold that's it I'm, I'm not kidding i know people don't like the smell of marigolds but this is not the same and then nasturtiums let me turn around here so over here i have dr whitey or witchy tomato and then i have paul robeson and mortgage lifter now put some alyssum in all the pots i believe and then i'm going to switch up doing a marigold in each i was thinking about it today this morning after taking my daughter to school i don't know why i just told you that but anyway <laughs> i was thinking about it today and um so i'm doing all this companion planning and so um if i'm not mistaken the alyssum brings the beneficial insects so like the parasitic wasps and then the marigolds deter uh, pests Here, let me turn this around so this is what I was thinking about in the car this morning with all this companion planting that I'm doing I'm planting alyssum to um, bring in beneficial insects like parasitic wasps that will parasitize tomato hornworms and then I'm also putting in marigolds to deter some insects and then I'm putting in nasturtiums as kind of like what's that called a catch crop for aphids or things like that so I'm sitting here thinking I'm like okay well I want to do these three different things is is the alyssum I'm trying I'm using the alyssum to bring in the beneficial insects but is the marigold going to um, deter them from coming in I don't know so I'm just gonna just do a bunch of this stuff but I, I just so happen to think that I'm putting in one companion plant to do one thing and another companion plant to do the totally opposite thing. So how does that impact the uh, insects that I want to come in? Right? So do, do the plants that deter pests also deter the beneficial insects? That is the question 
that I'm trying to figure out. If you know anything about that, please leave me a comment. Okay, so back to the tour. Um, in that bucket are wood chips, so I will mulch my tomatoes with wood chips. Really does a good job keeping the moisture in. You'll hear more plants, so the lemon and tangerine um, marigolds. I have some sage in here, thyme, and then a new a new batch of nasturtiums and then next to that I have the alyssum and calendula I have the rosina and the pacific beauty and then here's some I think these are classic zinnias and those will go either in the orange bed right here like right in the front or it'll go um, in another one the Here's a view of the back bed, the red, orange, and yellow bed from the front. These are still about to go over. Well, they're totally, you know, done now. They actually look pink and they're orange. Um, those still look kind of good. So I'm just waiting for those to go over a little bit more before I put the dahlias in. I should go ahead and put my yellow dahlias in this bed because it is ready. And I'm going to try to not cut back that greenery because, number one, I want the energy from the photosynthesis process to go into the roots by leaving that greenery up. And also, I'm hoping that the greenery will, will help support some of the, the new plants that I put in there, like the dahlias and stuff, until they get a little bit bigger. Okay, so now I will take you over to this bed right here is the pink bed. So these are the um, bread poppies and then I got in all the cosmos. So I have the afternoon white and the um, seashells in here. I also have purple coneflower in here and then some salmon scabiosa have a random golden alexander which I'll move I don't think I think this one either already blossomed or if not I should go ahead and move it oh I also put sweet peas in here to climb up the dahlias I thought that might be a good a good mix because the dahlias will shade the sweet peas and they maybe they'll last longer here in my garden in the front here I have poppy supreme the, the poppies are the next things to bloom and uh, purple coneflowers and I did get my zinnias in so I have zinnia illumination and exquisite they are pink zinnias there's another random golden alexander so the one other thing that's in here in the back with the bit with the like five foot stakes bamboo stakes are the pink dahlias so I got the pink dahlias back there because they can take a little more shade and then then the zinnias and I have the zinnias up here where they're gonna get more Sun so summer so my pink summer annuals cutting flowers are in um, for the most part I still have to put a few leeks in here I'm gonna put a few leeks in all the beds okay and then over to the purple bed I almost fell down <laughs> I have in the front here you can see the purple tulips are still there but um, there's calendula in here and then right here are all the zinnias that are gonna go in there and one thing of Cosmos bright lights Cosmos but these are like the zinnia um, Isabellina and the Peruvian canary bird oh mighty lion so more of the the hot colors right here even though it's the purple bed so I thought like the orange and yellows would go well with other things that are more purplish so then I have bronze fennel here I have three plants that was one plant and I got four plants out of it I don't know where I put the other one and then let's see behind I got all of my cosmos in for the purple bed so this is Rosetta and, af and then the afternoon white. These are blue um, and purple and gray poppies. 
and sweet peas again. Doesn't look too healthy, does it? You know, it's kind of funny that sweet peas are supposed to be like the easiest thing to grow and like I never get it going right. But anyway, I also have borage in here that I seeded and alyssum. I have alyssum in all the beds. So here with the steaks, I also put in all my purple dahlias. So I have Verones, obsidian, and um, a bunch of new ones that I got from Swan Island. Swan Island dahlias, I did a whole video on the ones I was putting in here, so I can link to that. So yeah, that is the purple bed. All the beds have alyssum around it. Um, here I have my trees and these are all the mulberries. They're the native red mulberry. And they're the ones that I'm waiting to figure out which one's male, which one's female, so then I can go plant them out. And then here I have a chestnut oak, two chestnut oaks. Here are my um, cucumbers. I am growing silver slicer, salt and pepper, and I think contender maybe. And then I have some rosemary. I planted out some rosemary last night to deter deer from some of my natives that uh, get eaten up by the deer. And then I have this where I potted up these Kelly and Joy dahlias. Those will go in the orange bed. And then here's one last uh, Verones obsidian. That's the one I potted up for my mom. And then I have another poodle skirt there. I think I actually, I think that one's for my mom too, but we'll see. Okay. There's just a couple pots over there. That's borage. I'll probably put that on the outside because I think it's might be deer resistant. And I'm not sure if any holy basil self seeded in there, but <clears throat> that'll be a pot of. So the front beds here in front of the cutting garden are looking good with the Hypericum prolificum and then that's also lined with the Carex blanda. So the Carex blanda provided interest for the start of the season and now the Hypericum prolificums they will kind of shade them out a little bit for the rest of the season as they grow bigger and uh, sedges typically like a lot of shade. Okay, so moving down to, oh, and my irises. Oh, I'm gonna get a bloom. I moved these from the front. And then this is, I think this is, it's Agastache, yes. Okay, so an update on the deer resistant veg patch. I'm hoping to put my cucumbers there today or tomorrow. Crossing my fingers. And then I think I made enough so that um, I can pot up some in, in case the deer do get it. But I'm crossing my fingers that it is deer resistant in my, my yard. And then there's the artichokes that I potted up in my last video and some oregano. This whole area is just going to be grow beds this or grow bags this year, and I have a lot of herbs. I have four big pots on my deck of all different types of basil that I'll pull over here. Um, and then I think I finally this is this is pretty much the update. I finally determined my curve for the bed. So now I'll edge a little bit at a time, and then get the rest of the cardboard down. Here are my sunny natives. So we have, this is a mountain mint. Yep, mountain mint, another mountain mint. I think that's short tooth mountain mint. And then this is Virginia mountain mint. And then we have aromatic asters, sneezeweed, smooth blue aster here, cone flowers, virgin's bower vine, the Virginia clematis, now this right here is purple headed sneezeweed, which is great. And then a flat of Hypericum prolificums over there, more Hypericum prolificum and uh, Virgin's Bower. I have some random pots of, it looks like big blue stem and early sunflower. These are all 
butterfly weed so the really the orange milkweed and then i think this is more purple headed sneeze weed rudbeckia indian summer which is a really cool uh, rudbeckia i typically don't do hybrids but it's it's a really good sturdy plant here's some salvias that didn't germinate and then now those are what are those oh rudbeckia triloba i showed you those in the back of the yellow bed here i have a steeple bush and that's in a flat that holds water steeple bush like water that's a flat of fire pink which i haven't seen any life yet then we have prairie drop seed side oats gamma i think there's little blue stem and big blue stem in there here's a siberian iris that i planted not this season but last season so it looks like it may take two years to germinate and then here is a random tree with a tag that has a question mark okay so that's in that bed and then here are my radishes that i started harvesting yesterday this is rutabaga and lisbon bunching onions carrots and another onion walla walla onion carrots and cabaret onion and then more radishes here are the raspberries the native black raspberries i think i'm going to do some layering with these i watched a really good propagation um a youtube video last night or this morning um it's the girl who is now doing videos for the epic gardener i will link it below because it is what it was a really really good source of information about propagating plants here's a, a joe pie weed that needs i'm gonna pinch that i think i pinched that one already yeah i'm gonna pinch this one too they get so big i think i'm probably gonna move the joe pie weed out of here it's in here and then there's little blue stem in here and then there's also a row of carex blanda so i trimmed it up up there to look a little bit nicer i'll get back here and clean this up i'm not sure which grow bags i'm going to put back here i'm wondering if i could put more tomatoes back here because i don't think the deer are going to get in here that would be a total experiment and if they did they did you know i wouldn't be able to worry about it okay so that is the deer resistant veg patch it's kind of um, a mess right now because it's in process. Let me take you quickly over to the bed on the other side of the cutting garden, which is really looking good now. I mean, no blooms or anything, but it is starting to definitely come alive. Here are my peonies with these buds on them. They are a bright fuchsia. And my whiskey barrel pond. You can see the leaves of the American um, water lily. Marsh marigold's gone over. And then here are the irises and the juncus afusis. There's more. This is a bearded iris right here. And I have some steeple bush around the whiskey barrel. And they have a real pretty pink bloom that's real ethereal. Uh, looking and might be a good sunny type plant if you want like maybe that a still be look but it's a little bigger than a still be this part of the bed is lined with carex amphibola which i believe i'm going to swap out for the prairie drop seed but here's some of the downy wood mint oh i got a pot in there some of the downy wood mint they planted the other day back here is a patch of Rudbeckia, and then I have some salvias popping up that made it over the winter. Lots of these, lots of these rosettes for the great blue lobelia. That's the lamb's, lamb's ear, not native, but it'll um, deter deer. That is um, an agastache. 
So this will all fill in. Here's the bearded irises that I received from my husband's co-worker. And I'm so excited because there is a bloom. Yeah, so just a whole lot of great blue lobelia irises, sedges. I really am liking this bed. I think it's gonna be really pretty this summer. I can't wait to see when it matures. Okay guys, so that is it for the tour of the cutting garden. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think I uh, asked a couple questions in there. So if anybody does want to give me any advice on that broccoli rob and my question about does using alyssum and a pest deterrent because of the smell does that impact the beneficial insects from coming in so if anybody has any thoughts about that i'd love to hear them so if anyone has any thoughts about that i'd love to hear them i think that's it for now so thank you so much for joining me here and if you like my videos please consider subscribing liking and sharing with your other gardening friends i will talk to you soon i will talk to you soon okay that's that Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this tour of my cutting garden. I believe I've asked a couple questions of you in this video. The one being, um, is my broccoli rob, is that um, bolting? How am I supposed to harvest that? I've never grown it before. So if you have any insight, let me know. Or any recipes, I'm always um, open for recipes. And then the other question is, is if I'm using alyssum and marigold so alyssum to um, bring in the beneficial insects and the marigolds to deter pests will the marigolds also deter the beneficial insects so if you have any thoughts on that please leave a comment below i'd love to hear from you because this whole companion planning thing is kind of a bit of a project for me this year so anyway i hope you enjoyed my video if you did please consider subscribing liking and sharing with your gardening friends thank you so much and i will see you again next time